Welcome back everybody. As you probably guessed by the title of the video, today we are going over two semi-automatic shotguns and they are the two that I frequently recommend uh, for serious use, whether that be duty use, home defense, or anything like that. Um, I know a lot of people, before we get into all this, are gonna say, what about a Mossberg? What about a Remington? What about this other brand? Well, I shot a lot of semi-automatic shotguns out there. Um, and at this point, these again are the two I recommend for serious use. Uh, just based on my experience, your experience may be different. It is what it is. And there's other factors that play into this as well that we'll get into as we uh, go along. But of course we are comparing two uh, Italian girls today. This one here is the Beretta 1301. And uh, basically this one is configured by the folks over at Langdon Tactical, but I also have a video on just the base version as well. Um, so we're gonna, assume that both of these guns are essentially in their base configuration and then we'll talk about accessories as well um, and then i also have my uh, benelli m4 this one right here has the h2o uh, finish this is actually the maritime finish not the cerakote so i don't think these are available anymore uh, in the u.s anyway and uh, they they have some that look just like it they're actually different though um, but this one also has the collapsible stock and uh, we'll talk about that here in just a second both of these guns have to come in uh, 922r compliant because they are imported shotguns so they're both going to come in uh, with five round magazines for what it's worth and um, we'll just i guess go through the list here on our whiteboard of knowledge before i do that today's video is sponsored by myself we don't have any sponsors here today. You guys can see here on the bottom of your screen, these are all my social media platforms where I post regularly. Um, go ahead and follow me at any of these places if you guys wanna see deals. Now the 1301s, as of when I'm making this video, have been kind of hard to come by lately, but the M4s have been coming in stock, in and out of stock every day pretty regularly. So follow me on those places and when they're in stock, we will let you guys know there. We also have two emails. One of them here on your screen is going to be just daily deals that I send out. And then the other one is going to be all of my content that I post on YouTube since the last email went out. Because nowadays, even if you're subscribed, for whatever reason, YouTube doesn't like to show folks my content. So that way there's no filters between my videos and your eyes uh, going through that email. So, all right, so let's get into it, right? We have RAM4 1301 gas systems. So they both utilize what they advertise and i do believe as well as self-cleaning systems um, so the m4 is utilizes something called the argo system um, and then the 1301 uses the blink system now if the blink system sounds familiar it's because it was used on the a400 uh, shotguns that have been around from beretta for a long time so what are the pros and cons of these systems well the a400 for folks who don't know is a shotgun series that is very heavily used by two groups of people. One is going to be uh, duck hunters, uh, waterfowl hunters, and then competition shooters. So uh, with that, one thing that the system does well is it shoots both heavy and light loads equally reliably in my experience and from everything I've read online. Um, there is a penalty to that, which we'll get into here in just a second. Uh, and then the Argo system, uh, the M4, for folks who don't know, that was designed for uh, military use. So it excels with heavier loads like buckshot, slugs, those sorts of things. With that said, my personal M4s, and I have two of them, have never had an issue in terms of malfunctions or anything like that running uh, lighter weight or lower powered stuff. Um, but if you look around the internet, you will see people that say that their M4s do have issues with that, particularly in the first thousand rounds until it's broken in. Uh, again, my experience differs from that, but I'm just letting you guys know from a wider uh, perspective that uh, the Argo system can struggle with lighter loads. So just kind of know that going into it. And when I say lighter loads, I mean like, like Walmart, Bulk, Federal, or something like that. Uh, any of your defensive loads should run just fine through it uh, with that. Um, talk about controls. They're actually pretty darn similar. Uh, one thing that is different in terms of placement, I should say. Um, so we do have our safety, which is a cross bolt safety on both of the firearms. Um, if you're left-handed, I guess you just kind of got to deal with it. Um, we have enlarged controls though on the Gen 2 Beretta 1301, which is what we're going to go with here uh, for this discussion. So uh, everything you see here is as it comes from the factory enlarged. And uh, I really do like that. There's everything you need to do to the gun uh, to manipulate it is big and under stress. That certainly can be a good thing. Um, so I like that for sure in terms of the controls, but really uh, basic in terms of controls, safety, uh, shell release and bolt release is really all you got on there. Um, the actual safety on the Beretta though is going to be in front of the trigger guard. Whereas here on the M4, it is back here on the rear 
So when you're operating it from a user perspective, uh, what I do as a righty is I'm basically just pushing it in with my knuckle. Um, I think it's more intuitive on the Beretta up front, but either one isn't an issue because it's simply just a training issue. Uh, the controls here though are going to be smaller on this particular uh, gun. Both the shell release, all of those things are smaller and it, I just, I like the bigger ones personally. I think it's easier to use. And then our charging handle here, this is actually an aftermarket one on there from the folks over at Botac. That's why it's large on there. So just know that going forward. Controls though, again, similar in layout, um, but I do personally, I prefer the Beretta. So if we were gonna give a check mark, there you go. Weight on the M4 is depending on the model because they do have different stock variants. Um, but most of them are gonna average right around eight and a half pounds. Whereas the Beretta coming in at 6.7 pounds. Now I will tell you, when you pick these two guns up, it is noticeable. Um, it may not seem like a lot here on paper, but it is in real life. Some of the ways they kind of get around that is Beretta, a lot of the parts where on the Benelli it would be made out of steel, on the Beretta is made out of plastic, like sights for example, uh, safeties, um, et cetera. So they save some weight there. The receiver is also lighter weight. Um, and pros and cons to it, right? If you're carrying around a gun, uh, like out hunting for a long time or something like that, that weight absolutely can make a difference. Um, and it also makes a difference in terms of recoil, but we're gonna get into that in detail here in a second, because I think it's kind of interesting the way these guns recoil, and it's gonna be its own uh, segment there. So in terms of like popular use and design, uh, the M4, like we said, extensive military use. Uh, all branches of the military that I'm aware of use the M4 most, heavily used by the United States Marine Corps, um, but all branches use it. And if anything uh, was going to break, it would break in the Marine Corps because those guys just abuse everything, including themselves. <laughs> it is what it is, it's Marine Corps life. Um, and then again, the 1301, and when I say 1301, I mean the tactical model, I should point that out. Uh, they also make a three gun model or a competition model. Both of them though are heavily used in three gun competitions. So a lot of the data that you're gonna see out there that's gonna come from folks who have really high round counts, it's gonna come from one of those two places. Again, you really don't see the M4 much in competition. You just don't, uh, but the 1301's everywhere. Um, lots and lots and lots of shooters are using it. Um, so the loading gates on these, I'm gonna talk about that here for a second, uh, because they are different in terms of function. Um, with the 1301, there's nothing that gets caught or snagged as you go to load it, regardless of the technique you're using. Some folks use different techniques to load through the loading gate. 1301, nothing snagging, nothing's gonna poke you, nothing's gonna bite you. Uh, whereas on the M4, everything's gonna snag you, everything's gonna bite you, everything's gonna poke you. Um, so uh, there again, there are techniques to overcome that in terms of ways to load it. Um, but just know that uh, if you're gonna get pinched or bit uh, doing a reload on one of these guns, it's gonna be the M4 that's gonna bite you on that one, uh, just is the design of it. Uh, again, I kind of think that's because military design, they really didn't care if soldiers or Marines are biting their thumbs and getting nicked up because they don't care about that. All right, uh, so there is that. Price point, always a very important thing, right? $2,000 right now, these are 2021, uh, February 2021 prices. Uh, looking around, you, these are good deals. So a good deal on the M4 right now is like 2000 bucks. On the 1301, again, Gen 2 Tactical, 1300 is the cheapest I've seen it in the last two weeks. Um, again, check out my social media posts if you guys wanna find them in stock. Moving on to light loads, we already touched on it a little bit earlier, but there's some uniqueness uh, in terms of recoil perception to these two guns and they're different uh, in this regard. And I don't know the science or the engineering behind it, but I'm gonna tell you what it's like from a shooter's perspective. Um, with the light loads here coming out of your 1301, uh, the recoil impulse is much less than it is on an M4 with the same loads. I've shot them both back to back, literally the same day, same loads, and it just is what it is. The M4, I don't know if it's that gas system just trying to over gas it, getting it to come back in your shoulder, but the M4 is gonna punch more if you're using lighter loads than you are uh, here using the 1301, and the exact opposite is true, which again, I get it, it's counterintuitive when you're using the heavier stuff. So with the 1301, Again, partially due, due to weight for sure. Uh, that weight difference is significant. Um, when you're using a you know, buckshot, um, bird sh uh, buckshot or slugs, excuse me, full power stuff, um, the recoil is not insignificant. You notice it. Uh, it definitely punches you and you are aware of it. Whereas with the M4, it tends to just soak it up a little bit more. And again, 
some of that is going to be due to weight uh, without question, but some of it is also due to that Argo system. Um, it bleeds that extra energy off in a way that the Blink system just doesn't with those heavier loads. Um, so again, just know that going into it, if you're gonna be firing, you know, 200 rounds of buckshot per day and whatever law enforcement role you might be training in or military role you might be training in, just kind of take that into consideration there um, because it will beat you up a little bit more uh, with the heavier loads here or the hotter loads with the 1301. And again, the inverse is true. If you're going to, you know, out just plinking around, you're going to use some, you know, big box stuff in your guns, the M4, it's going to punch you more than it should. So there is that aftermarket both of these guns as of right now 2021 there are a slew of aftermarket options for them whereas that was absolutely not the case if i if i filmed this video you know two years ago the 1301 was going to be lagging big time in terms of aftermarket accessories but now 2021 plenty of accessories for it again this particular one here was outfitted by the folks over at langdon tactical but these things can be done yourself uh, we do have magazine extenders on there this one to making it up to uh, seven rounds plus one um, and of course, you can buy different sights, chokes, those sorts of things for it. Both of these guns do have uh, swappable chokes, so you can set it up to pattern however you want with your particular load. Um, we see here we also have our shell caddy there on there and Magpul stock, and there is an adapter that you do need if you want to go that route uh, for both the Zhukov handguard as well as the stock. And uh, then of course we have the Airdis Industries uh, optics mount here. This one here for the RMR, but they make them for several optics. Um, any of these items on this particular gun that you're gonna need an adapter for are from that same company called Airdis Industries. Um, they do really high quality work. I know the owner, full disclosure, but it's good stuff. And uh, it makes the uh, 1301 shine in terms of uh, practicality. Now with the M4, again, it's gonna come in in most configurations with the five round uh, tubular magazine. They make extensions as long as you want. They're out there everywhere. And again, accessories are out there in droves. This is our impact weapons components, uh, sling mount as well as light mount. So you guys can see we have a light mounted up on there. There are also aftermarket four ends if you guys wanna take advantage of M-Lock. Ooh, that wind is picking up. But if you want to take advantage of M-Lock and those sorts of things, uh, this one here, we have a Velcro uh, extra shell caddy on there, as opposed to the Airdis Industries one that you guys just saw, but they make ones that you can permanently bolt on there as well if you want to. Aftermarket sites are available. This here is the Midwest Industries uh, mount. This one, we have our uh, aim point mounted on there. Again, they make it though with various different options out there. Most of your M4s that are available to civilians, and it pains me to say that, but it is what it is with US laws, are not gonna have the uh, adjustable stock on there. That said, they're available aftermarket if you guys want to buy an adjustable stock and not have a fixed stock. They're out there. The fixed stock though that comes on the M4, which my other M4 has, is very comfortable in my opinion. I probably wouldn't change it out, but I'm six feet tall. If I was five foot six, I probably would change it out. So uh, there is that in terms of uh, aftermarket support. Both of them have really, really good aftermarket support. And one other thing I want to touch on is the folks over at Battlefield Vegas. Uh, they do a ton of rentals, really, really high round count stuff. And the thing that's cool about those folks is that they actually document the round counts. They document failures. They document what parts break, when they break, those sorts of things. And the folks over at Battlefield Vegas said the M4 is without question not even close to anything else out there on the market. Uh, the most durable gun in terms of ultra high round count, particularly most of them are using uh, buckshot when they fire as well. So in terms of high round count buckshot and a semi-automatic gun, they said nothing else is even close. So take that for what it's worth. Which one do I recommend you get if you're out there on the fence trying to decide? <laughs> Both is the answer to that. Um, I personally would have no issues trusting either of these guns with my life. Again, that's why I recommend these two uh, guns specifically over all the other options that are out there on the market. Now, for some folks, the price difference is going to be kind of the deal breaker, right? So you could buy your, you know, 1301, you can get all the accessories for it and some boxes of ammo and still be coming in cheaper than you would with a bone stock M4. So, uh, you know, that's definitely something you have to factor in. Again, though, with uh, 
some of the heavier loads, how that's going to impact you, follow-up shots, all those sorts of things. You kind of just have to weigh all of that together and then kind of go with whichever you like. But again, I personally would take either one of them. Um, but that's kind of just my rundown on them because I get this question a lot. Which one do I prefer? Which one would I go with? I guess you had a gun to my head and said, which one do you have to go into a gunfight with? You can only pick one. I'd probably lean M4. Um, but again, it's simply just because of the proven durability of it. Uh, you can't rush provenness, if you will, right? A 1301 is a relatively new design. Um, now in 10 years, you know, if the folks over at Battlefield Vegas and other places are starting to say that they're similar in terms of what they're seeing in terms of round counts and, and durability, that may change. But again, you can't rush it. M4 has been around a while. It's been around all over the world. It's been used widely by folks who treat their weapons really poorly, and it's continued to perform fantastically well. So I guess I'd go M4, but again, I'd feel perfectly comfortable <laughs> with the 1301 so there is that uh, if you guys have any questions you can post down below in the comment section as always uh, best place to reach me is still over at my facebook page but for whatever reason these days i'm not able to see all of the comments on facebook like i used to and i don't know why that is i don't control it um, but it's still the best place to reach me if you guys actually have a question so that's pretty much it if you like this type of video and you are subscribed cool if you aren't subscribed please go ahead and hit the subscribe button the vast majority of people who watch this video are not subscribed to the channel and uh, I would appreciate it if you guys subscribed and followed me across social media again. That's it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.